all texts taken from original document by Richard Kent. I was called on this night at nine o'clock by a military chauffeur and constable with a motor car. I hurried on my clothes, fear clutching my heart, suspected the journey by night was no idle one. At first I assumed it was myself alone he wished to see, but when we proceeded to my sister, sister-in-law and brother, my fears that news was bad became certainty. We drove through the black night, pouring torrents of rain, challenged at intervals by armed sentries, until Kilmainham Jail loomed up dark and grim before us. Inside the gate we were kept in suspense, while keys and lanterns were got, and thence through dark narrow passages only dimly lighted by candles carried. Sentries stood idly about. A prison warden could just be distinguished in the gloom. We picked our way across to Eamon's cell and soon stood within, clasping his hand. He was the same calm as always. Not a sign was there that the advent of Moon and the probable cutting off of his young life had the slightest effect. His hair was ruffled as though he had been thinking deeply, running his hand through it. I asked, what was the news? Oh, the worst, he answered nonchalantly. Then, putting his arm around Anya and smiling, said, And isn't it all for the best? I don't think so, Eamon. She wound her arms around him. Oh, I think it is. All for the best, he said. Two guards stood in the cell all the time. In a corner was the plank bed, nearer the door a small table, on which stood a guttering candle and numerous letters, complete for posting. His mind had been disturbed somewhat by a visit from the prison chaplain talking trivialities who insinuated something might happen during the night. This conversation was unnerving as he was quite prepared to die. We stood aside while they sat side by side on the lowly bed, talking, talking, talking in whispers, just like the pair of lovers they had always remained. Our allowance of twenty minutes was nearly spent, so we sat down in a little circle, him the coolest of us all. Our janitors were getting impatient. At last, the centuries, time's up, please, made a stand for the final parting. It was hard to realize it was the last leave taking. Never demonstrative. A simple handshake for us three and a kiss for Anya composed our last sad blessings. On my way out, the commandant said, no one had any right or reason to even suggest a reprieve, that Eamon was to be shot in the morning and kindly suggested my going back and telling him. He was standing upright in his cell, back partly to the door, hands in his pockets, apparently thinking, thinking, thinking. I told him his friend, Father Augustine, was coming. He replied, oh, is that so? But in a tone that I since think meant he knew all hope was gone. Another handshake, still not a tremor and the door clangs between us. 
back into the rain and the night. This was my last glance at my brother. The candle was still burning. 